I right. guess we like to wait. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. So uh, we actually don't have a presentation, and um, according to our QAP, well, I'm sure you've read it. We don't have a lot of changes on the underwriting side. Very few. Um, so good job. So we're just here to answer any questions that you might have as it relates to underwriting in the competitive round. None, no cost, no cost limit questions. I figured that was going to be the first one to kind of pop up. There's no cost limits. That should spark some conversation. No, yeah, none. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sandy. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. The agenda uh, say that the scoring topics about the five years. Yeah. <laughs> some I hear some background noise, so if someone could mute themselves. Thank you. OK, uh, so the agenda that was circulated mm -hmm. uh, say that there will be three topics for scoring that will be discussed in this session. And what were those? Okay. The first one is deeper targeting rent income restrictions. And then the second one is mixed income development. And then the last one is favorable financings. OK, maybe if you have any questions about those, those categories really didn't change. OK. Well, I just thought we didn't, make, we didn't make any changes to those. So if you have any questions about how we're going to view something, how we're going to look at something, um, we'll, we'll answer those. But nothing changed in those scoring categories. OK, it's good to know. Yes. Thanks. I think um, I think the only thing that kind of came up during our scoring round this past year for um, deeper targeting was um, we had a Q&A out there about not being able to claim points on um, in two categories. Um, we had someone that did and did not get the points. That's the only thing that I can kind of really share from what we saw during the competitive round. So when we say don't claim points in two categories, don't claim points in two categories. Got it, thank you. <laughs> um, and as far as cost limits, the, you know, just the conversations that we've been having here recently is that we're just going to, um, compare the applications to each other and just to see if there's any outliers. Um, we will probably look at a few line items just to make sure that, you know, they're in line with industry standards, um, but that's about it. Robert, you have any updates on the home front, home underwriting? You're you're muted. Thank you. How's that? I think a lot of it was kind of sort of covered in the other sessions in terms of where the allocating dollars are going to go and some of the available funds. And um, we obviously have uh, you know a couple of different programs. We have National Housing Trust Fund program. We have the home program, um, which are two separate programs that we are starting to look at evaluating, combining if possible. Maybe that's something that we could, uh, that may be a new topic worth discussing, but we're starting to try to utilize, um, given the increase in funds coming from both those programs, um, how to best fit transactions with those funds. And as the developers that are out there are aware, that 
you know, trust fund dollars have to be allocated to a certain AMI band. Home funds have to be allocated to a uh, separate AMI band. And so the, I guess the, the magic is trying to figure out how to make that all work together and, and come up with the best optimization for the transaction, utilizing the funds we have available. Um, we're always available. We've gotten, I think, more a little more creative maybe on our side to try to figure out the best application to where the funds are, are best used. And as we've seen over the last two years, um, we've certainly used them to fill a lot of gaps if we have the ability to do that. Um, and I think our loan production, we've certainly kept it at a pretty pretty significant level over the past few years, and hopefully we'll be able to keep that up um, moving forward. Outside any general questions, that's kind of sort of, I guess, a general kind of a macro view of it. Um, I've got our underwriters on the line if there's any specific questions, but now yeah, we, um, we're here to answer any questions specifically towards any of those topics. And um, well, while we have an audience, I know there's everybody's, um, we have new staff members. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to kind of introduce my team. And I would hope that everyone would show their faces once I call your name. Um, on the Final application 8609 side. Um, the senior person for that is Lakeisha Clements. Lakeisha, are you there? Yes, there she is. So I know a lot of you all have been communicating with her. So there is her beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, everybody knows TC or Teresa. Maybe Teresa Pro. I call her TC because at one point in time we had two Teresas at the agency. So she became TC. Um, TC helps um, coordinate all of the bond applications, REAP, LOD. So she's the one that's coordinating all of that. And then we have two underwriters on our team. We have John Langford. He's also spearheading our PCC process. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, submit a project concept change, John is the one that is reviewing that. Um, and then uh, last but certainly not least is Aja St. George. Aja um, has been with the agency for probably about six to eight months. Um, and she is her primary responsibility of well, of, of course, everyone's underwriting, but she is definitely spearheading that 10% uh, test review. And then, of course, I'm seeing it. I see someone raise their hand. Hey, Sandy, it's Kevin Buckner. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Um, I'm not sure this is the right breakout program, but and I, Jack thought he did a great job of answering the uh, the two point one million dollar cap. As a development team, if we took we took extra credits, we did as other people did. We understand how to uh, calculate the one point five, and that's just held against if we're the same development team as we've always been. That 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 one point five deduction is held against. Our total cap amount. I mean, somebody said, is it four times that amount? And that didn't make sense to me. But is it just one time? Is it, you know, if we had $100,000 in credits that we took, mm -hmm. we get $150,000 deduction in our total capacity. And it's just $150,000 per yeah, development. I forgot the penalty. Don't, don't forget the penalty. Right, so a hundred thousand, so plus the 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 one point five, so the penalty is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in credits, but that's but that's held against just one development team. It's not more than one hundred and fifty thousand. No, it's not. More, it's not more than one hundred and fifty. And then, can I ask you another question? Uh, <laughs> uh, and I think Jill might have said this, but. You know, DCA can increase the credits if they, if you know, if they decide they want to go over that cap, which is fine. I, DCA can do whatever they want to, but when we're underwriting, if we go over our limitation, then one of our deals gets thrown out if we were to submit. You know, so how does that work? Well, I don't. How would it work? We're not planning on doing that. Right. Um, that's just been 
it's in our QAP. So we just thought that we would bring that up. We're not planning on doing that at all um, unless there is just a <clears throat> high priority um, development that has been submitted. That is the only way that we would use that. Okay. All right, great. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. I know there's going to be a lot of questions on that about partnering and um, and we're still trying to work that out as well. We've had a lot of discussions about it. Hey, it's Kevin Getton. Okay. Got, I don't know that you, we, we, we talked to uh, um, Jill and Jack on a separate call earlier this year or earlier um, about the general set aside. Is there anything more than you could, I mean, no, nobody's won the general set aside in years and the last people that did return their credits. Um, can, can you give us any other insight than they did? I mean, they were, you know, we, we, we talk deal specifics with them and. Right. Well, you know, the general uh, set aside is that something that that's the commissioner's pick. Um, and he is not really one that really likes to. Choose. Um, just because of the position that he's in, um, he does not like to uh, exercise his right to do that. Okay. And I think the one that you're referring to that gave their credits back is that um, the one that was going to be built down in underground. Yeah, that's the one they gave. They uh, mm -hmm. that there were there were two years given and something mm -hmm. went wrong and they gave the credits right. back. So uh, I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the name of it. It was, a, it was I think it was a Presswood deal or something like that. It was a Presswood deal, but I couldn't remember the name of it. Okay. Uh, got it. Okay. Thank you so much again. I see someone else's hand is raised. Yes. The floor is yours. All right, Sandy, I don't know if you were asking for me or not, but um, this is it's Philip Searles, but I don't well know if my if myself picking up. Um, <clears throat> the, you know, there, there have been some recent changes on utility allowance calculations. From an underwriting standpoint, at the point of application, do we need to have the and I do we need to have the um, the, the the utility allowance study done if we plan on using an alternative form of um, utility allowance on on a deal we're turning in this year? Or is that something we could do post award? No, that's not post award. It's during underwriting. OK, it needs to be submitted with full application. All right, thank you. No problem. I think they're also looking at maybe uh, there's a limitation on that change as well, Philip. Uh, I'll I can I might reach out to you offline and talk a little more about it. We just noticed, um, you know, from we've historically always paid utilities and we're noticing some of our older properties. You know, last year, one of our communities had a hundred and forty five dollars per unit per month utility expense. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's a benefit to the resident, it becomes a on a deal of that size that we, I'm talking about thirty six thousand dollar hit to the bottom line to the property. You know, um, and you're talking about post award because you can't I don't think you can change your you can submit a PCC for that, but it has to be like 18 months post 8609 issuance. Yeah. yeah. And, and for post awards, it'd be a different situation. I'm, I'm wondering about for, you know, feasibility of, it, of, it, of a 9% deal we're turning in this year. Yeah, we need to see that uh, third party report. Yes, ma'am. OK.
fell with your hand is still up. Oh, Sorry yeah. about that. There you go. <laughs> I thought you were full of questions today. I, oh, I do actually have another question um, relating to uh, structured parking and, and, you know, basically it's going to be a metropolitan area, most likely city of Atlanta. Mm. Um, you know, in the past, I know you guys have been somewhat uh, acceptable of it, but I'm just wondering with lumber now over 1,200,000, um, is structured parking something that we're going to be shying away from? on a, or is that something that's still going to be on a case by case basis? Um, that is a case by case basis. Uh, and I know we have been a little bit lenient on you talking about podium parking, right? Yes, ma'am. Podium parking or a, uh, or housing over, uh, mm -hmm. yes, like podium parking. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have been a little bit lenient on that, especially if it's in the city of Atlanta where you're kind of landlocked. Um, but with the cost limits being kind of out of the window, we'll probably be looking at like deals just to make sure that the costs are in line and working with construction on that. Um, I thought I saw Kevin's hand up, changed his mind. Yeah, no, I did. Um, none of us believe we have capacity issues. <laughs> um, who are you guys talking about? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't say, but just know if you know you're you're, you're slow about applying for your 8609s, you're constantly asking for extensions, that it might be you. Uh, it's probably zeros. I'm sure of it. Damn it. <laughs> I was actually kind of nervous over here, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I see Willa out there. Willa, you don't have a question for us? Oh, hey, Willa. We're gonna make we're gonna make Willow <laughs> at least just to check in to say hello. How's that, Willow? Uh, I wait a minute. Oh, I had I had to unmute myself. I'm having mute difficulties. But how are you? I miss you dearly. It's um, good to hear your voice. I think so. <laughs> good. <laughs> As usual, Will. I have any questions. Um, at this particular time, but um, I might reach out to you. It's good to hear uh -huh. your voice. It's like, it's yes. like a family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hopefully we'll get to see you soon. I hope so. I think we, you know, hopefully we will see each other soon. I know. Our former, DC, our former DCAers. Yep. And I think Marshall's on here. So, hey, Marshall. I saw Marshall on the other uh, uh, session, so it's it's good to see his name hey. come up. Yeah, I'm, I, maybe he jumped off, but I thought I saw him. Unless he just doesn't want to speak to me. <laughs> well, we can ask him about his race car. How's that? <laughs> That'll start him talking. <laughs> oh, he says he's here. His mic is not working. Okay. So good. We can talk about him and he can't talk back. I think I saw Clara. Hi, Clara. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Hi, Sandy. How are you? Good. How are the babies? Oh, she's 12. No. 12. No. 12. No. 12. No. 12. No. 12. No. Take a lot. Take a lot. Well, don't feel bad. Mine turned 20 this year. 
Wow. Wow. So no baby. So no baby. He's taller than me. Taller than me. Bigger than me. Bigger than me. Thinks he's smarter than me. Smarter than me. Hey Sandy, is my mic working? Hey, Hello. Yes. This is Marshall. Is my mic working now? Oh, yay. Hey, Marshall. Hey, I figured it out. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, just working away. It's great. I miss you. I miss you guys as well. Good to hear your voice, Marshall. Hey, Robert. <laughs> I actually was in Kentucky over the weekend, which is, uh, which is, you know, race car driver land, and I was talking about what you had done with the old uh, Beamer. Oh, yeah, it's still, we're still running it. It's a good car. <laughs> well, I see you in Savannah. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Catch up. Yes. We can fight again. <laughs> we never fought. Well, we did a few times, but it's all good. <laughs> you fought every morning. <laughs> is, is that what you call it? That was just a friendly disagreements. <laughs> I thought that was just morning discussion, Marshall. Yeah, that's just morning coffee. <laughs> um, somebody just put something and said, we purchased land from city municipality at a discounted rate and provide an appraisal at a higher value. How would we treat the excess land value? Would we be able to record land at the excess value and record the difference as a loan from the city eligible for favorable financing or a third party capital investment in the revitalization redevelopment plan? Yes. Uh, at a discount rate. I think is there a, I, I, we'll have to go back and refer the QAP, but I, isn't there a time limit on profiting from a land transaction? I think that where there's a time limit where we would have to utilize the actual purchase price versus the assessed value. We, you know what, that may be something we'll have to research and get back to you on. I thought there was a time limit on. I think it's three, I want to say it's three years. Three years, I think, Sandy. Yeah, so that would prevent that utilization of that higher assessed value, you know, you were able to purchase the land at that discounted price. Right. I think you have to hold it for three years. Sure. Or, or, or allow that valuation increase to, I think, a three-year period in order to utilize that increased value. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, send that to our Q&A and we'll definitely research it a little yeah. bit more and get you a, um, a more formal answer. Yeah. Robert, you want to um, introduce Gary? Because I don't know. I would love to. <laughs> He's, yeah, Gary was on earlier. I thought I'm uh, brushing up his um, yeah. smart looking outfit. There we go. <laughs> All of y'all, I think, who have been involved in either in the home funds or um, uh, trust fund funding in the last two or three years have probably met Gary Garner. But um, uh, Gary's, if you look at our group, Gary's our senior underwriter within the home funding group um, and has brought to our group uh, many, many years of experience, both in loan underwriting, asset management, capital markets expertise, with a particular expertise, I would say, in both Freddie and Fannie um, map guideline underwriting and those type of uh, structures. So, um, Gary, I'm going to turn it over to yourself How about that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm good. I just, uh, <laughs> hello all. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to being a, 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 a seasoned musician and a magnificent cook, too. How about that? There you go. Yeah, multi-talented individual. That's what I miss about being in the office. Yeah. <laughs> the food. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a little bit leaner since the uh, pandemic.
but we are looking to add to our staff. If anybody out there knows them, some underwriters that may want to um, have the opportunity to learn uh, loan underwriting, we do have a couple of positions in our group open. So um, it's always good to get that word out. Sure. As Jill said, they were focusing on staffing up. So. Yep. Got a lot of vacancies. More than we wish, but it's uh, give, give some folks some opportunity to uh, maybe do something that interests them. So Marshall, if you're listening, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was just for Marshall's medication. Did she say you miss me? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Willa didn't say she missed me, so. Uh, <laughs> well, we know she does. Yes, I did, and I was going to comment on your new hairstyle. I said, oh, okay, this is different. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen you since you had your new hairstyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm growing my hair out. It's pandemic. Pandemic. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm okay. considering it. The things we do when we're stuck at home. Stuck at home. That's true. So I just want to to ask. So for the course limits, there's no cap on course limits. No, we're removing the um, cost limits. We have cost reasonableness in our QA. In our QA. Mm -hmm. Are you going to base? a question of cost reasonableness on cost limits in any way that would have been applicable last year? Where, where's, your, where's, your, where's your ground floor for cost reasonableness? So if cost limits, since there are no cost limits, mm -hmm. what is your trigger for reasonableness? Is it going to be based off of what cost limits would have been? No. We're not looking at what cost limits would have been. We are we're thinking that we're going to compare everyone to each other. Okay. Um, we do have a number in mind as far as a per unit cost. We have a range in mind for that. Um, but you know that always is subject to change once we see the applications. Are you going to keep your range secret? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're looking at 300 to 350. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Marshall is more trying to compare the universe of applications and see if we do a good job of making sure that um, the, the outliers are identified. Gotcha. Thank you. give you a sense of kind of what we were able to do. Gary just put together kind of a summary of what we were able to um, achieve over the last couple of years. And it looks like obviously, as everybody's aware, our lending platforms have grown as more dollars have come in through the various programs. And so, so far, I think we did about 40 million in 220. And I think we did 46 million in 221. And so at least we've um, kind of raised the bar a little bit and just in terms of our loan volume. Um, I think prior years were probably in the 20 range. Talking about home loans, um, Robert, home. 
both oh, home and we've been able to utilize the National Housing Trust Fund. And two years ago, actually, we had some CDBG funds available that occurred from a, uh, a disaster occurrence, I think, two years prior. Uh, so that, that's one of the programs that we see occasionally when these come in, to CDBG funds. CBDG, okay. Those are coming as part of natural disaster fundings um, to assist, um, you know, potentially apartments may have been damaged by hurricanes or things like that in areas that are affected. And we um, occasionally get funds based on where those areas were affected. So I think we did some down in the Brunswick area. I think that area down in southeast Georgia went okay. affected, I think, by a hurricane a few years back. I think we did Albany okay. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those funds can only be used for national disaster areas or? Can you apply for them for other? I think there's certain areas that are identified that are affected by those natural disasters, and that opens up um, CDBG funds to be available for uh, either through an RFP or uh, affected properties within that um, geographic area have the capacity to apply for um, CDBG funds. I think they. I think it's by county or SMSA. I think I'd have to go back and check a reference in terms of how those those areas are identified. Uh, when that natural disaster occurs. Oh, okay, so they only allocated what I'm saying for disaster areas. At least our portion of it utilizing those funding, right? We, we, we ensure that those multifamily uh, developments were within that geographic region. You know, there are mo multiple purposes for uh, yeah. mm -hmm. CBG, but I think our portion is CDBG DR. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yep, the part that we deal with at least okay. for sure. Okay. Yeah. The DR is disaster recovery. Is that what that stands for, Sandy? This is that, yeah, disaster recovery, right. with Teresa Crow on the call. I was just wondering about the timing of the 42M letter. So uh, what about the timing? Uh, it, it, it just seems like some takes longer than others. Well, yeah, some do take longer than others simply because uh, just the back and forth, it might not be a complete application. As you know, with um, the bonds are not well we say they're not competitive but they're not really competitive so when the application comes through it might not be a complete application so there might be a little bit more back and forth um we do say that there is a, a 75 to you know 90 day review period but that just all depends on how well the application is put together or how complete it is okay that answers my question. I mean, we sometimes had a bond deal in our department in underwriting for three years. <laughs> wow. Long time. Yes. So hence the discussion tomorrow. We're having an internal discussion about um, the deals that are in queue or in underwriting right now, or the ones that have not submitted an application, a full application yet, on how on the timing. Um, I'm trying just trying to close out those 20 
we got two 2019 deals and I think the rest of 2020 trying to get those closed out. <clears throat> okay. Hey, this is Jordan Wilson. I'm jumping around meeting to meeting, so I'm sorry if I've missed something you've already covered, but I just want to uh, ask and make sure I was catching a little bit of what was said in the opening session about the home funds, and I guess you guys are going to be accepting a survey as to how to deploy your home funds, but are those an option to be used with non-person applications for this round? No, not, not at all. Okay, that's no. what I thought, but I just wanted to verify. Thank you. No problem. Hi, this is Brianna. Um, I have a question on underwriting waivers. Um, I think in the QAP it mentions if you're requesting any underwriting waivers, um, you should submit the core application um, with your pre-application. I just okay. wanted to, okay, I wanted to confirm that was correct. And then um, is there any additional guidance on that? Like, should the full core app be filled out? Is it just sort of the portions that are relevant to the underwriting? Or how will you be sort of reviewing that core app that we submit with the waivers? Um, I would like it to be as complete as possible. Okay. As complete as possible. Um, I mean, with it being in, you know, submitting it through the pre, the pre-application process, it gives us a little bit more um, a freedom to have a conversation with you. <laughs> sure. So if there's not some if there's not something that's completed that we really need to see, then I can reach out to you. Okay. And do you anticipate any big changes in the core application? Really, I'm just asking because the core application isn't posted yet, so we just wanted to you know, know what we're up against submitting for March 4th. No, from an underwriting standpoint, there's not going to be much at all. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. That answers my question. No problem. I think our focus now has been trying to how to integrate everything into emphasis. So there's not being a big push on making changes to the application itself. Got it. Thank you. No problem. I think one of the things that I miss most about this not being in person is that I don't get to eat all day. We had great food at the workshop. <laughs> you're, you're muted. I think I smoked salmon and I miss particularly Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I don't have anything Everybody. to eat around. I don't have anything to eat around here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Drink my water. <laughs> <laughs> they did it right up at the gallery. I have to give them credit. Is that? Yeah. Great breakfast, great lunch, great snack. Fingers, fingers crossed, huh? I know. And then, of course, just seeing everybody. <laughs> yeah. Will, I was telling somebody about all the help you gave me when I first started DCA, and um, it was uh, it, it kind of really made me uh, miss some of the old days where we got to see everybody in person. Especially when you've been in the industry for so long, some people are like family.
that becomes evident when you start asking about the kids and like you said oh the kid is 14 and i'm like huh i remember when the kid was born <laughs> Ah. Some portion of uh, the forms and manuals have been uploaded to the website so that. Great. They are uploading as we speak. Perfect. marketing, environmental, relocation, and construction services. I think we updated the home one as well, the home manual, although there weren't too, too many changes, quite frankly, to it. Yeah, we don't have a manual. We have um, look at appraisal and market study, but very few changes to those. Robert, I thought well, I might run into you at the groundbreaking yesterday for um, uh, the Dylan uh, Park. You know, I, I probably, if I'd underwritten that one, I probably would have maybe gone to it. Um, I know I got the invite, but um, I was, uh, hopefully I'll make the next one. I always love yeah. outdoor events. I'm sorry? I said I love outdoor events. Oh, they're so much fun. Particularly the weather was kind of nice. I was trying to catch up after being a couple of days off, so um it's, it was kind of busy trying to get a couple of things done. Yeah, it was beautiful outside. Yeah, it was nice. It's nice to see the weather maybe warming up a little bit. Yeah. Speaking of Guinness, we've encouraged our underwriters to um, go out and try to get out and do site business and things like that more uh, if possible. Um, and I think Gary could probably emphasize that, that it, it helps us get a better understanding of the um, uh, transaction and um, if, if our underwriter or somebody in our group has to meet you on site just to do a site review, um, that's something that we're trying to encourage and get people out more. I think it, it, it helps us understand the story a little bit more, um, and particularly as as you developers know, the challenges of moving dirt is is pretty significant and the cost is getting significant. So um, we, uh, we would encourage you all to invite our underwriters or anybody to get out there and, and do a site visit with you um, and give the opportunity to really um, tell the whole story of the development from a development point of view, as opposed to just looking at numbers all day. And it certainly helps when we see costs that appear to be a little bit higher than what we see unusual when you've done the site and you, you get a sense for the topography of the challenges that you guys face every day. I think Jill sent out an email about several that are coming up, so hopefully. Yeah, yep. It's, get out. It's always nice and it's such a pleasure to see the final development and it just really kind of brings it all together. Um,
I'm surprised no one asked if we're going to start taking cryptocurrency as payment <laughs> for compliance fees, tax credit processing fees. That's the new thing, right? <laughs> You're a mute. It sure seems to be the going thing. Now we're seeing everybody advertising for it on television and um, it'll be mainstream by the uh, time we have this discussion, maybe next year. Wow. Yeah. Maybe we can go to some people like Dylan and just get the experts <laughs> advice. <laughs> I don't quite understand it. He talks to me all the time, but I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I need a wallet. I need a, I need a wallet. I said, why do you need a wallet? You have a wallet. He says, no, mom, I'm talking about for my crypto. <laughs> That's a different kind of wallet. Well, how much does that cost? It's, oh, it's only $150. Oh, my. Like, <laughs> He's in college, right, Sandy, right now? Yeah, he, he, he attends Georgia Tech. Oh, oh, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Wow. How time flies. Oh, my God. How time flies. Yeah, he'll soon be a junior. Yep. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, okay. no more little baby. I know I keep my picture up when he was a little baby. <laughs> I know I keep seeing every <laughs> once in a while I see that picture in the background, Sandy. And the blue and white blanket. I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yes. met him. Was he a sophomore? I think he was a sophomore when I met him first, Sandy. I think he was a sophomore. Oh, in high school? In high school, yeah. Yep. I think that's the first time you brought him in. Sophomore. He was at best a sophomore, I think. Tom Flies. No. Anyway. Well, see, hey, Thurston, I see Thurston join. I'm sure you've got a question out there, Thurston. Thurston. <laughs> No, we're never calling for hey, back. Hey, Robert, how are you? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm usually talkative, but uh, everybody else has been asking good questions. I, I don't have anything new for today. Welcome, by the way, just to say hello. How are you? Thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you, Sandy. Same here. Thank you. Even though I'm hiding behind my turned off camera. <laughs> That's OK. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Understood. I have a routine in the morning, so I just get up like I'm going to work. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to work, but like going into the office. <laughs> <laughs> We're all trying to figure it out, aren't we? How are y'all doing on the outside? Are you, everybody starting to integrate back into their offices or be curious to see what the uh, development world is experiencing? We're We're hybrid at one street. We're mm -hmm. sort of generally three days in, two days remote. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of, we view it as health and safety, but also just general wellness. Sure. It's been, been a nice balance. It has been. I'm absolutely loving it. Yep. Yeah. I, guess, um, I think at least my production number certainly hasn't hurt our group. So um, that's the only thing <laughs> maybe as you're from there <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, I think we adapted me. really well. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, yeah. we were already kind of on the fringe of going 100% remote anyway because of space at our agency. Mm. We got a new department. Um, historic preservation is a part of our agency now. So they came over with lots of plans and needed lots of space. So yeah. Yeah, they probably uh -huh. took two thirds of their or the second floor. I would think, you know, the the floor that most of us occupied. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we were in the process of getting ready to go 100% remote. So <clears throat> it speeded up the process. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I still go in two days a week. I think Robert and I are two days a week. Yeah. And we have to share offices now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come full, I think I'm back to the office I started at Thursday. Absolutely. I think I'm, I've migrated around the second floor. I'm, I'm getting close <laughs> to my original office. <laughs> Sandy's the only one who knows for sure. <laughs> that sounds about right. She's, she, probably, she can only remember who used to be in what office, I think. She's my best go to. I've been around myself. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I said, oh, I remember I'm sitting there. I used to sit there. I used to sit there. Yep. Yep. And, um, just keep that idea. Will, I'm right next to your old office, by the way, Willa. I think that's where I've migrated back to. Oh, really? <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> anyway, it's um, it's much more efficient now. They've done a good job of setting up really neat workstations and things like that. So it's uh, it has a, has a, not nearly as many boxes as what we used to look at. Oh no. <laughs> but I do really. You all, I do. Have any paper? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No paper at all. Thank God. And well, I'm probably on the other side of your old office. <laughs> so we're really? still just, we're I've still been on the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, who was in the office where I was at? No one. Yeah. No one. It's vacant. Oh. Vacant. And where's and Teresa? Vacant. Yeah. Teresa's one hundred percent remote. Teresa, remote. Teresa got. Oh, okay. Teresa got remote yeah she's in stone mountain now yeah <laughs> <laughs> right there's t I, I thought i thought it's my tc come on yeah. yeah all the underwriters are 100 percent remote uh, yeah wow that's, that's great <laughs> they just have to stay in the state <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> that's just the one requirement we, we're serving <laughs> georgian so you know, it, Gotta stay in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Is this how y'all do application review yeah. over Teams? Hmm? Wow. We, just, we sure do. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've done it what two two rounds now? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah, two rounds. We still fight. We still fight over Teams. <laughs> Spirited conversations, different points of view. <laughs> yep. You know, the process sure to work. It still works. Though, doesn't it? It does. It does. It works well. It's amazing. How to do with all the moving parts and the complexity of the applications these days and the competitiveness. Um, it's a uh, it, it's really I find interesting to see how well the process actually does work. We just have to be a little bit more organized now. Making yeah, sure the documents right. are in the right place, mm -hmm. you know, serve access to server. Right. Um, so definitely uh, doable. Different, but doable. Sure. I find that I work a little bit longer. <laughs> That's probably correct. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Longer before my exercise class starts. <laughs> Gotta go to that. That's right. Like stress relief. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when you're at home with, you know, the family all day long, you're like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but thank goodness I don't have any little ones, so I'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah, I have a whole newfound respect for I think mine are about your age. I heard you say you have a son who's a junior in college. Yes. Yep, I do as well. Okay. Yeah. Where's he? Where's he attending, Thurston? He's at Barry College, up oh, outside that, of Rome. Sure. Yep. I know there's a whole group of people who went to Barry right out of my high school. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I probably had 20 people from my high school who went to Barry. I knew a bunch of folks who went up there. No, oh, cool. Yeah, he's really enjoyed it. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful area too. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, Thurston, they don't want anything to do with us at that age. <laughs> That's true. Unless it's about money. <laughs> yep. That is a universal truth. All right, money. Um, are we going to the Atlanta United match? <laughs> <laughs> Food. Mm-hmm.
Oh, we've got four minutes. So if anyone else has questions, we've got four minutes. And it's do the best we can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's good because we don't have any, you know, we don't have any major changes. Changes so or updates, yeah. Okay. Up front, so right. All right. of the changes were okay. in other sections. Other sections. Well, anyway, this is well. I'll have to uh, make a date to have lunch with you, you and Sandy, uh, Robert. So That'd maybe one day um, while both of you are in the office, if I do miss you. Definitely. I think that'd be great. I think that'd be great. Okay, we'll do. I know. Anybody I love heard, What's dinner. the timing on the old Cheshire Ridge Hub Bridge? Any, anybody heard the timing on getting yeah. that open, by the way? I don't know if anybody's been down that area lately to see how that's going. I, I have not. Where do we go next? And you're mood muted. Sorry. Um, let me go back to my schedule. I think there is a break, and then we're going to come back together again. Um, go. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So there's a 15 minute break and then you're going to go back to there's another link where we're all going to reconvene um, from the breakout sections. Well, thank you guys. We'll we'll see you in March. Yes, see you in March. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye bye. Take care.